Okay, so I just want to do a little like programming hobbyist kind of update here. This is not really something I'm working on too intensively, but um, I'm doing this kind of in my spare time to learn a little bit more about uh, Unity, particularly Unity 3D, and just, I guess, have fun a little bit. So this is, um, I don't know, I'm calling it my Wiz clone engine. So you remember the wizardry games, like the DOS games, and I guess some on the one on the Super Nintendo, and also the Might and Magic games, the old ones like before 3D. That uh, they just um, you just kind of like move through the world, you know. It was it was kind of like a, it wasn't it was mimicking a 3D world. It was really actually a 2D 2D system though. So I've kind of. I, I don't know. I've gone gotten like an engine here that's I, I think kind of uh, does that um, idea. Um, so this is this is the world or the viewpoint that um, I represent the map with. This is a um, right here. Let's see if I can get an angle there. There it is. So that's what the um, actual world view is made up with. You can see you start you you actually are set here, and you can see in this direction five tiles, this direction five tiles, this direction five tiles, and you start at the bottom there, and you can see up about four tiles. So if there's like a high ceiling, you should be able to like it should be able to give you that depth. So um, now normally with the 3D engine. You just like you would take um, objects, like you know, I would create an object, like three D object. I create a cube, and I'd put that here because I have like a, I don't know a box there or something like that. And uh, I create another. Let's see, I create another cube. Let's say a sphere for some reason, and I have that right there. And then I create uh, like a cylinder. And right there, let's say that was a pillar or something. I don't know where that went. Where's my cylinder? There it is. Yeah, that's over there. And then you do all that for like, you know, whatever kind of world you want to create. And uh, that, you know, happens, um, that happens when the game loads a map. And that's very like a slow process. That's why, you know, you have these extreme loading times for these games here. Um, and also, of course, it's also very um, processor intensive when you're actually displaying the map. Um, but here I've come up with a, you know, fairly um, uh, simple way um, that, uh, like, if you were to spawn a thousand by a thousand um, X and Y uh, world in 3D, you know, with I don't know how much, like, on, say, the Z axis, but... Uh, even just that, like that's a thou that's a million, like a grid size world there. That's going to take a while to load in an A three D system. That's going to be huge. Um, however, here I just hit start and it instantly starts up there. And uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm displaying this world with these boxes. Uh, here they are, right here. And just I'm cutting, I'm I'm like sculpting this whole group of boxes um, to represent what what's in my map data, which is basically just right now zero and ones. A zero represents nothing. One represents a cube right there, as you can see, a box. And as you can see, I can move through it like like it's a 3D world, like it's actually like has generated a 3D world, but. It really hasn't. It's really just, it always has those boxes there, and I'm just moving them around to make it look like you're moving through them and rotating, you know, the uh, them to look like you're rotating. So it appears you, that you're moving through, and of course you, you've got your uh, player position and everything, and it's keeping track of where you are in the map. And I, I think, did I disable it? I guess I disabled the fact that, uh, yeah, I disabled the buttons to move up and down, but I can also move up and down here uh, if I want to, but that's that's currently disabled. Um, but anyway, you can move back and forth across. Um, so, yeah. 
So this is the edge of the map right here. This is the zero position on the X, so I can't move any farther over there since I started on I started on the um started on the edge anyway. So but you can keep going here. I'm at 13, 12, 14 out of a thousand, by the way. So this is this is gonna go on for a long time. This would be an enormous map. Um, this is not something that you'd normally spawn. It would be overwhelming to the player. But I can do this, and I can do this instantly. And it's kind of cool. Um, so you might be asking, well, that's okay for boxes, but could you actually represent a real game with this? And I'd, I say you actually could. Um, because you can, you can, on the fly, you can change these boxes here for whatever texture you want. You know, I could change this box whichever box this is here and there in the, in this I don't, I don't know which box this is here let's see I'm um, right there that would be this box yeah I could uh, I could change its material on the fly here and select material unfortunately I don't have a bunch bunch of materials made I don't think I'm I think I'd have to remake the material let's see here Material. Um, do I have that just there? It is. That may or may not work. Shader. I have it on mobile shaders because. Um, there we go. <laughs> That's going to look ter terrible, but whatever. Can I select that, please? There you go. Let's try it. Uh, select material. Did that work? That might not have worked. I don't think that worked. Oh, I'm sorry. There it is. There you go. All right, there you go. Yeah. So I just I just changed that material there. So that box. Uh, um. Yeah. So on the fly, you could change the material of the box to represent like whatever is in. You know whatever kind of uh, thing the player is supposed to be coming across like if this wall were supposed to be uh, you know it's supposed to be a dungeon wall or something you wanted some brick there and you you know once the player entered that dungeon area you would start changing the walls to the brick you know and that would I think that would do it I think you could um, I think you could get away with that for making a um, like an RPG type game uh, you would need some other stuff, like you would need uh, you need to represent things like you know maybe chests and doors and stuff like that. I think you could probably do it with something like uh, let's see here, um, something like this actually. Just need to put this up here where I can see it. Where is that? Not exactly sure where this thing is. Obviously, it's right there. Oh, that's the wrong act. Okay, I've got to move it down. Not sure what's going on. Hold on. The Y should move it down. Where is this thing? There it is. Okay, just found it. Yeah, okay, so you could have something standing like this, which you just put a, um, again, let's get that chest texture. Yeah, that would be, let's pretend that's a chest. So we could just superimpose our chest texture on on that, even though you can barely see that, or that it's a chest texture. That You know, there's uh, better, like, um, uh, it's better, like, um, no, what's it called? It's a better way of pre uh, making that texture uh, texture actually um, get some more sharpness. That's actually pixel art, so it's blurring it a lot. But uh, anyway, there, there's things you could do to fix that. And that would be like a chest, you know, a flat chest sprite. And you could, like, when the player rotated, like, you could, uh, you could you know, well, first of all, it would stay on that square, but you would, you could rotate that, the angle of that uh, mesh to match the player so it was always straight on you know, facing the player so 
Um, and that, that could be used to represent, represent chests, doors, you know, fountains, anything, anything static that you wanted in the environment. You wouldn't actually have to make a model for it. You know, the, the only models would be maybe these, uh, just these wall, these wall, uh, objects here, like these cubes, or maybe better, maybe actually it would be better to make these out of just flat meshes and put them together if you wanted a wall or a block or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can imagine just like walking up to, you know, this, this would be maybe a chest in the corner and you get that and, you know, there'd be a couple, you know, a couple other objects to make it interesting. But other than that, you just need, uh, you know, these walls here and you have yourself a dungeon and then of course enemies when you fight them I don't know I, I would probably go for uh, battle sequences rather than real-time kind of combat stuff like uh, say eye of the beholder or whatever uh, what happened there? oh yeah that's what I yeah that's right <laughs> kind of kind of weird <laughs> um, I don't think you could make like a doom clone with this I think uh, that would be I well I think you could but I think that would be really hard um, it would be just too hard to do, um, but uh, I don't know. You could definitely make an RPG. It'd be pretty cool. Um, will I do it? Well, I don't know. If I get um, I have a lot of things that you know are kind of like on my plate, I'm um, I'm thinking this would be pretty fast to do though. So I'm kind of thinking about toying around with it a bit more, um, along with a lot of other things. You guys know that I'm yeah. You know, I've got a lot of kind of a lot of plans. Uh, when I can. I'd like to, you know, work full-time just uh, putzing around, but, uh, you know, that's that's not uh, not an option just yet. Um, you know, just kind of messing with things, experimenting. Um, anyway, this is kind of cool. Um, I think this is cool, and of course, 3D has, has become incredibly easy now with uh, things like Unity. Um, so, even somebody like me who's it's not really a, a 3D whiz um, can actually do it too. So anyway, I don't know. This is, this definitely might be a thing in the future. I kind of want to, you know, kind of want to play around with this more. And um, I'll probably throw you guys a few more updates on this as I go along, along with uh, hopefully some updates on some other, um, like uh, Maze Quest 3 and stuff like that. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you... Um, you are fascinated by it, as fascinated as I am, and uh, okay, I'll talk to you guys later.